where we read from chapter 2, beginning with verse 9. Exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is of every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. For it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. This is the word of our Lord. Let us pray. Glorious and gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of each of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our only source of hope and comfort. Amen. <clears throat> Dear followers of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, over the past few days, I was searching for the right toast to the new year. The right words to bring in 2011. So of course I had to Google New Year's Eve quotes, poured through pages of content, and came up with this one that I thought really summed up the sentiment that I wanted. In this new year, may your ill will last as long as your New Year's resolutions. Because it's true, isn't it? We all think about those things that we want to improve in the new year. And for the most part, all we do is think about them. Sometimes we voice them to our spouses, to our family, to our friends, but most of the time, by the time January 15th rolls around, those resolutions are ancient history. I'm going to tell you what God's resolution for you is this year. Continue to do exactly what you did last year. That's exactly it. Exactly what the Apostle Paul told the church in Philippi. Continue to do what you have been doing. And we hear that, and in our minds we think, God couldn't want that from us. God really is not serious that he wants me to continue to do what I did last year and what I've done all of my life. We know that and feel that because of the sin that weighs upon us. The things that we know that we have repeated over and over and over again in this past year in spite of knowing that God has said, do not do this. You shall have no other gods and we fill our hearts with things that come before God and push him to the bottom of our list. We don't always call upon God's name in prayer, in praise, with thanksgiving. More often we call on God's name complaining about the place that he's put us and all of the things that we don't have. Remember the Sabbath day? Oh, not in these times. All that church stuff? Come on, you really think that God wants me there in worship at every opportunity? <coughs> That he wants me to read his word daily? And that's just how we've mistreated God. Look at how we've mistreated each other. We don't honor our parents. We show great disregard for our elected officials. Teachers. Pastors. 
We treat other people as sexual objects. We're not nice to other people. We hate them. We gossip about them. We steal from them and we want what is theirs so it could be mine. That's what our life is like repeatedly, day in and day out. And pastor, you're going to tell me that God says to me, continue to do what you did last year, this year? Absolutely. Continue in your faith. Continue confessing Christ. Because that's what the Apostle Paul laid as the foundation for his message to the church in Philippi. Focus on Christ. You believe in Him. You trust in Him. Confess His name. Confess the fact that God the Father sent His Son into this world, but exalted Him to the highest place in heaven because He gave Him the name that is above each and every other name, the only name by which we can be saved. Jesus Christ. Jesus. The very name means He saves. He is our Lord. He is our Savior. He is the one who takes those sins that we repeatedly do each and every day and has endured the punishment for them took that punishment to the cross of Calvary. Today we are reminded of the first blood that was shed in accordance with God's law. On the eighth day of his birth when Jesus was circumcised. He kept the law perfectly. But that blood was not the only blood that was shed. His life blood poured out from the wounds in his hands and his feet and the flogging of his back where the thorns were pounded into his head and where the spear pierced his side. His blood cleanses us from all our sins and we confess him as our Lord. So, of course, we run to Him and fall before Him with that weight of sin that is upon us. But maybe the thing is that this year we need to have that weight upon us. To realize that there are still things that we can do as we work out our salvation. As we continue in our faith. That if we are going to confess Christ... We need to grow in knowledge of Him and put that into practice in our lives to actively become searching for ways in our life to do God's will. Not to sit back and be spectators in the arena of God's faith. But to get up and play the game. How often don't we sit back and wonder, why God, why all these things? How come I don't feel good about this? How come I don't feel like my faith is working when all we do is sit and somehow think that God is going to send a holy angel to us to hammer the word into our head? Pick it up. Read it. Study it. Pray over it. Continue to confess Christ and to grow in your understanding. And to get up and do good works. Because we're the only ones who can. Only those people who confess Christ as their Lord and Savior can do anything that pleases God and is a good work. It's a good work because of our faith. Which we all have which we all confess, which the Apostle Paul says, continue to do. Continue to confess Christ by the things that you do with your hands, by what you say with your mouth. Continue to work out what God's will is in your life, for He is the one who works in you and works with you. 
that power and strength of the Holy Spirit to guide us in our life. But so often, we're like that new little puppy that you put the leash on and what does it do? It just sits there. It's not trained. It doesn't know what to do. And it's as if God has to drag us along by that leash to get us to heaven. The time has come for us to grow up and realize the training that has been given to us, the knowledge that we possess to confess Christ, to be obedient to Him, to do what He wants, to put into practice His law and His will, and to actively start looking for ways each and every day to be one of His children, to continue in the faith that is ours. We all know because of our sinful nature, we can do better. We know that, and we realize that. But now, by the Holy Spirit's power, God says, do something about it. Do the good that you want to do. Be the person that you want other people to be. Love like you want to be loved. Be the shining example of Christian life and the love of Christ because you confess Him as your Lord. And maybe it's good for each of us to have that reminder so that we can encourage each other. That when we see that good behavior in each other, to praise God, to thank God for it. To encourage each other to do that more and more each day. Because that is our calling. That is what we profess as the children of God. Is it going to be easy? Not always. Is it going to be enjoyable? Sometimes it is. But none of that really matters because it is what it is God's calling for us to do. We have faith in Christ. Let us confess Him as the greatest gift that has come to us. He saves us from our sins. Let us become active in that faith. Let us do good this year. Let us continue to do what God has asked of us. Amen. Let us rise. Now may the peace of God which goes beyond all of our understanding keep your hearts and your minds and especially your lives in the one true faith unto life everlasting. Amen.